In this video, we're going to finish up section 1.3 by taking a closer look at experiments. We're going to get started talking about experiments. Before we do so, I just want to reiterate again that experiments are the only way to show a cause and effect relationship. While observational studies are great and they can show a correlation, they do not show cause and effect. Only experiments can do that. And again, experiments are only as good as their design. So let's talk about some of the aspects of their design. Um, I apologize ahead of time. It's just a lot of terminology. So this slide and the next slide, just full of terminology, but I'm going to talk you through all of it before we talk about experimental design. So treatment. A treatment is some condition applied to the group of subjects. And in fact, it's to the treatment group, which of course makes sense. So a treatment is something that is applied to a group of subjects in the treatment group. And it's important to understand treatment makes it sound as though it's giving a medication or something like that. Treatment doesn't have to be that. For instance, let's say I wanted to take a look at um, readying students for the ACT uh, test. And so I'm giving a prep course. That could be the treatment is taking the prep course. So it's something that is happening to a group of subjects. Subjects, of course, are the people or participants or things being studied in an experiment. So typically, if the subject is a person, it might be called a participant. Um, if it's a thing, then it's just a subject. The uh, response variable is, so these two go together. The response variable and explanatory variable are the variables being studied. And again, when we talk about cause and effect, we're saying the cause is going to be the explanatory variable and the effect is going to be the response variable. So the explanatory variable was something that we are going to alter, that we're going to um, give as a treatment and then we're going to see the outcome. That's the response. So the response variable is what we are measuring as a result of whatever the explanatory variable is. Again, control group. Control group is just the group of subjects to which no treatment or a placebo is applied. Um, I assume we've all heard that word placebo before, but if you haven't, a placebo is given to the subjects in the control group who typically don't know they're the control group. And it is given because we want to take away the aspect of our minds telling us that something is working or not working. And so again, placebo effect is a response to the power of suggestion rather than the treatment itself. So for instance, if I'm going to you know, be in a group and I'm given a medication, I might be given a sugar pill to make it look like I'm given the real medication, even though I'm not, and then say, oh, wow, I sure do feel better. Well, that's the placebo effect is it's a sugar pill. It's not going to make you feel better. But because I believe it's going to make me feel better, it is. So that's the placebo effect. A little bit more terminology before we look at experimental design. The first is blinding. Blinding in an experiment has to do with keeping information from either the subjects in the experiment or the subjects and the people interacting with the subjects. So for instance, a single blind experiment is where the subjects don't know if they're in the control group or the treatment group, but the people who are interacting with them, so the people who are um, doing the study know which is which. A double blind is when neither the subjects nor the people who interact with the subjects know which group each subject belongs to. Confounding variables. A confounding variable is a factor other than the treatment that causes some sort of effect on the subjects of the experiment. So for instance, let's say I am measuring cholesterol and there's a control group of, of people taking a placebo and there's the treatment group of people taking a medication that's supposed to reduce cholesterol. Confounding variables would be things like the subject's diet, 
that can affect cholesterol. The subject's hereditary um, that can affect cholesterol. So there are things that are at play that aren't being measured. And when you're looking at an experiment, your job is to do your best to figure out what are those confounding variables and then try to reduce the effect of those confounding variables. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. An IRB, or an Institutional Review Board, is a group of people who review the design of a study to make sure that it's appropriate and that no unnecessary harm will come to the subjects involved. So if you were doing an actual, real study, the IRB would be a part of that study. And then informed consent involves completely disclosing to participants the goals and procedures involved in the study and obtaining their agreement to participate. So now that we know all of that terminology, hopefully it wasn't too boring, um, let's take a look at how to design an experiment. The first thing that you do is randomize the control and treatment groups. So when we talked about observational studies, we talked about different ways to find a sample. That's what we're talking about here, is we want to include people in the control and treatment groups that are chosen at random. Number two, control for outside effects on the response variables. So when we just talked about those confounding variables, that's what I'm talking about here. So we're looking at outside effects, we're looking at things that might affect the response variable other than the treatment, like confounding variables. We want to do our best to control that. And then number three in the real world is the most important thing, is to replicate the experiment a significant number of times to see meaningful patterns. And quite often you will see the researcher replicate the experiment several times and then provide all of the information as to how their experiment was set up so that other researchers could duplicate that experiment and see if they come to the same conclusion. So let's take a look. We're going to read over an experiment and we're going to answer these questions. So I'm giving you the questions first so that you can have them in your mind as we're reading the scenario together. We're going to look for the explanatory and response variable. We're going to look for the treatment. We're going to look for which group is the treatment group and which group is the control group. What's the purpose of administering saline to group B? And is it single blind or double blind? And is that the best choice? Let's read over this experiment and I have put a very, very tiny representation of those five questions on the top right corner of your screen so that we don't have to keep popping back and forth. So we're going to work through this together. Consider the study in which neurologists want to determine if taking intravenous dose of vitamin C will reduce the amount of nerve pain reported by patients. The study was narrowed to focus only on patients with a nerve disorder, multiple sclerosis. After the study approval, the neurologists solicit volunteers who are patients with MS who are reporting nerve pain. The participants are then randomly assigned to two groups, um, each having 20 participants. Participants in group A are administered intravenous doses of vitamin C and their nerve pain is tracked. Participants in group B are administered intravenous doses of saline, which has no active ingredients, and their pain levels are also tracked. The patients are not told which of the two groups they are in. However, the nurses administrating, administering the IVs are aware of the group assignments. After a predetermined length of time, the amounts of pain reported by the separate groups are compared to determine if an intravenous dose of vitamin C will reduce the amount of nerve pain. So, whoo, that was a mouthful. What in this case, again, we're not going to write them out. We're just going to talk about them. Identify the explanatory and response variables. So again, the variables are the things that we would be tracking or looking at, and we want to determine if taking an intravenous dose of vitamin C will reduce the amount of nerve pain. And so the explanatory variable, the one that would explain the response would be, uh, the intravenous dose of vitamin C, this would explain the results. And then the amount of nerve pain reported would be the response variable. That would be the response to how much vitamin C they're taking. 
what is the treatment? Well, the treatment is what is being applied to the treatment group. And that, of course, would be the vitamin C. So again, the vitamin C. And specifically, we would talk about what dose of vitamin C would they get. For C, which group is the treatment group and which group is the control group? So the treatment group would be group A, who are given the vitamin C. So that's treatment group. And then their nerve pain is tracked. Group B are administered saline, and then their pain levels will track. So this is the control group. The question for D says, what's the, purposes, what's the purpose of the saline? So obviously that is a placebo. The purpose of the saline is a placebo so that those people in group B don't know if they're actually getting vitamin C or they're getting saline. So that is the purpose, is that it's a placebo to reduce bias. And then of course, is it single blind or double blind? Well, because the patients are not told which of the two groups they are in, but the nurses know it is single blind. Now, is that the best choice? Uh, no, not in this case. Double blind is almost always the correct choice. Now, why would it matter? Let's say the nurses who know that you are in the um, treatment group or know that you're in the control group, anything that they do or say may influence you in your responses. So if they know that you are in the control group and you're getting saline and not any medication and they ask you how you're feeling, they might say it with a little more empathy. How are you? How are you doing? Though that's why we use blinding is because we want to reduce any kind of human error that we can. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at critiquing a published study.